Hi and happy Thursday. I am happy you are here joining me. Welcome to the New Kingdom. I'm Chelsea. Chris is on vacation this week, so I will be the host of today's show. Hi and happy Thursday. I am happy you are here joining me. <laughs> Welcome to the New Kingdom. I'm Chelsea. Chris is on vacation this no, week, this so one. I will okay. be the host of today's show. Hi and happy oh, Thursday. There you, there you go. Okay, sorry. Technical difficulties. <laughs> but my little helper here, I'm here with Stephen Donnelly, art director of Kingdom Games. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. What are we talking about today? We have a brand new project, and I'm looking at myself in reverse, so <laughs> I get a little confused about how to look at the camera. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get used to direction. Yes. We'll figure this out. I know. It, it, this is what happens when you put noobs on camera. <laughs> 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 we got this. So... Um, we're Kingdom Games, and we are kicking off a new project today. And this project is so new that uh, we only have the basics of it to start with. And we want you to help us. Please share your ideas, reference things that you like, anything that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So, Chelsea, what do we know so far? So we know that it's going to be a fantasy medieval RPG. Correct. Yes. What else do we know? Well, has anyone ever done a medieval fantasy RPG? Well, there's a few. Right. Yeah. It's a good market. Yes. So what are we going to do differently? Uh, th that is a good question. <laughs> 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 so our studio director, James Parkman, has um, been envisioning um, a fa medieval fantasy RPG for a long time, and many as of us have. I mm -hmm. used to play Dungeons and Dragons back in the day, and I spent a stint at TSR. Very as cool. Art director. Yes. Back yes. in the nineties, and if I remember, Thursday night is Dungeons and Dragons night, correct? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Are it's you playing Dungeons tonight? I actually don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Not tonight. It's been a little while, but we are very excited to get started again. But yes, That's it's awesome. Dungeons and Dragons night on Thursdays for us. I heard that you were going to be DMing at some point. <sighs> we'll see. I want to. <laughs> I haven't started creating the world yet, but we'll see. Oh, I would just buy something. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe thinking about it will help with thinking about this. Oh, actually, that's a good point. So, who do we have with us today? Amber Rain, welcome. Hello, Amber Rain. It's great to see you. Thanks for being with us. And what so, else? Go ahead. Today, we have for them not just our faces, we have art today, right? Yes. You're the art director. This we is what do. people are here for. Yes. And we're here at day one, art directing a new vision. Yes. But we need to celebrate. <laughs> So, we're celebrating in style. Picked up a 18-year-old uh, bottle of Glenfiddich. Highland Hi. Scotch. Mm. And uh, to the new project. I have never had Scotch. It is, uh, just sip it. Put a little ice in. Um, you always want to add a little water so you can get the effervescence. Breathe it in. And when you drink it, know that afterwards there's a bit of a burn, and you'll feel that burn all the way down. I'm ready. It's very pleasant. Celebrating. <laughs> all right. Excellent. See what you mean. Very nice. So, what do we know about our project? Uh, we don't have a name for our project yet, so we're just going to call it Medieval Fantasy Game. Um, there are some buzzwords that James has put together that are defining the vibe of the game. And uh, first one is, or the first two are mature and sinister. Mature and sinister. So it's going to be on the darker end. Yes. Yes. We are going darker with this title. Um, the environment, the world itself is bleak and oppressive. Ooh. Yes, does not sound good. It's going to sound like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, thank you, Gabriel Nightshadow. <laughs> yes, it is the best way to kick things off. I would say so. Um, let's see. Uh, we want to keep the environments desaturated. Um, so as we're working, I tend to work a little overly saturated. Color? Is this color that we're talking about? Yes. Okay, yeah, yes. So it's not going to be bright and saturated. There'll be spots or moments mm -hmm. of color that will like draw your attention. It'll be very important. I like that. Color is a tool, kind of. Yes. Color. Yes, I like that. Yes, and actually in a few moments here, I'm going to explain my thinking process. All right. Through this. Um, oh, what we else have do a question. Amberine yes. says, so opposite of five. Uh, not opposite of five. Maybe in color scheme. Yes, or definitely vivid. in color scheme. Right. Yes, if that's what you mean. Um, yes, it's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's going to be very desaturated. Um, so perhaps pulling from Revelations. Um, Amber Rain, there is... I don't know if we're going to be pulling from Revelations. That's a little further on, but there are things at Kingdom Games that um, that are the cornerstone of who we are, and we will continue with that. Um, so let's see, desaturated environment. Um, something uh, also that he brought up is ancient architecture shrouded in mystery. Shrouded in mystery. Yes, and when I asked, what do you mean by ancient architecture shrouded <laughs> in mystery? James looked at me and he said, ancient architecture shrouded in mystery. <laughs> Guess we'll see what that feels like. Yes, and actually our design director, Mike, pulled together some wonderful reference, some great starting points, so that was excellent. Um, what else do we have here? Um, custom character creation? Yes. Custom character creation. Yes. I'm so, very excited to hear that. Uh, you can play who you want and make whoever you want. Uh, I will be limited in body type. Um, my initial thought is when you think of bleak and oppressive, I think more kind of thinner, Mm -hmm. um, malnourished right. kind of feel to it. Um, that's my thinking right now, but we're we're literally in the first days. So yeah, it could be anything. <laughs> it, could, it can be anything. Yes, we'll see where it ends up. Um, what else? Oh, something that's very key to the character that you play is you are special. You have been summoned to this world to help. Okay, you are not from here. No. Okay. No, you have been summoned here, specifically summoned, to help save this world, this bleak and oppressive world that is falling into darkness. Um, it's not much light in the world, but where you are summoned to is essentially the last light space on the planet. And it is a city. Okay. And at the center of the city is a special monument that needs your protection or something along those lines. At the center of the city is something special and all the evil in the world is trying to get to it. And they're at the walls of the city and you have been summoned to not only protect it, but protect the people, rebuild the city, and then push back the darkness. Wow. Do we know what the city looks like? No. Is like? Um, mm. Well, it's going to be a medieval city. And when we say medieval, we targeted between 14 and 1500. Okay. And that goes for the technology level too. And 14 to 1500 European. Okay. So I know in Asia they had gunpowder and like right. guns by then. So we won't have that. So it's going to be um, melee focus, swords, axes, shields. I love those. Um, <laughs> yes. My favorite kind of technology. And so what we'll have to do is uh, through this show, we're going to take um, medieval architecture and how do we spin this into our own vision? How do we create our own look? But that's a little further down the line. Yes, we will need some help. Yes. Um, boy. 
I'm into the weapon system. I'm very into yes. the technology. Those are games I can play. Yes. I don't when guns get involved. I, I'm so bad at the uh, reaction. I'm not fast enough. For me, I like <laughs> a game that has a good narrative. I, if the story is mm -hmm. there, I book, movie, whatever it is, I'll play it, read it, watch it. TV show. <laughs> yes, I did read all of Games of Thrones. Stick with the TV show. Don't read the books. It's my two cents. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the other things is the enemy that we're going to be fighting. Um, this world is overrun by demons. You did say evil. Evil, yes. Yeah, so evil has overrun the world, and it is demons. Uh, what that means, we'll be finding out over the course of this program. And then one last thought was James was thinking he would like to see lots of verticality in the environments. A lot of games are very flat, and I know from the last couple of years of working on Five, besides going up and down stairs, right. we didn't get much ver verticality. Right. And most games, like, you know, I think of Skyrim, I had to climb a mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was long, but for the most part, you're just kind of winding along the road. So, mm -hmm. how do we incorporate more verticality? Is that a lot of cool. stairs? If there's a lot of stairs, does that mean a lot of architecture? Is that the ancient architecture shrouded in mystery, mm -hmm. or is it something different? Mm -hmm. So, um, where do we want to go next? Uh, so, let's start with, I'm going to switch us over. Okay, we get the small window. <laughs> I have to scoot over. <laughs> Getting and your drawing stance. Right. Is this one yours? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, where do we... How's that? Good me. Okay, I'll kind of... <laughs> yeah, I know. It throws me off. Um, so... So the way this starts, and oh, I guess we should talk about what the program's about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. We could probably keep the art up. Yeah. Doesn't Maybe. matter. We'll go back to the art. So this program is going to be a weekly concept program. Um, Steve and Tonelli every week. Every what? week. The wolf and is back. Yes, Caravaggio's Wolf is back. And uh, so we're going to be doing this every week, and we are starting the first week of August. And we need, we need something from you. Um, what time and day is best for you? Yes, help us. When should we put this show on? For how long? What time? Yes. What day of the week? So if you have some thoughts... <laughs> Thank you, Amber Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, he is. <laughs> yes. Um, please let us know what day and time works best for you. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it. Actually, two days and times would be best, mm -hmm. uh, just so we have a backup in case there's a conflict or something. Yes. Uh, Thursdays at 4.30. This time is the Kingdom Channel time. Mm -hmm. And so this, uh, yeah, Caravaggio's Wolf's concept. Something. Joy of concept. We'll have to put someone on a title. Yeah, we need title a title mission. too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with something clever. But um, in all seriousness, please, if you have a time that's good for you so that you can watch live and you want to participate, please let us know and we'll try and do that. Yes. Okay, so um, with the creation of a game, uh, you start with the ideas and you put these ideas down on paper. And things are always, they flow much better when you have one idea holder. And we are very fortunate that uh, James Parkman, studio head, has been in the industry for about 20 years. Uh, he's run teams, he's obviously running a studio, uh, he is an accomplished artist and one of the best world builders that I have ever worked with. So, he's solid. And, and I'm hoping that this project is exciting enough that he's like, I'm going to lay the city out. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but, yes, yeah, so where am I going with all this? Oh, so uh, when you create something, the first thing you do is you put it on paper. 
and then you start sharing that out with the um, the product holders, the the disciplines. Um, Aaron, our technical director, is looking at engines and mm -hmm. doing an assessment of that. Uh, Mike, our design director, is reviewing different types of gameplay and thinking about, mm -hmm. okay, what are we going to be doing? How are we doing this? Right. And I'm thinking about what is this going to look like? So the first thing is I take a step back from what James has shared with me and I start thinking in the abstracts. And for me, the abstracts were, there's not much light in the world, there's one spot of light, and there's a beacon, a beacon of light. So at that point, I start, I start trolling the internet. <laughs> and I look for images and I visit uh, art station, Okay. Is that it? Name fell out of my head. I was going to say conceptart.org, but that's like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dating myself. <laughs> if I was an artist, I would know. Yes. So it's Art Station right now. Every few years, there is this is the place to be for beautiful art and great work. If you haven't visited Art Station, I highly recommend it. So this image and... I'm kind of wondering if it's a Howard Pyle. There wasn't a name attached to it, but I was just searching for it. And what I liked is how it looks like a, a tree stump, mountains, it's high up, and then there's light in the center, and the rest of the world, even though these rocks are kind of pretty, uh, could be dark and spooky. Right. So I, I just grabbed that, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's got a nice vibe. Um, this is another one, and I picked this up off of ArtStation, and this is by Anton Fedotov. Uh, it's just called Cave, and one of the things that I liked about this was just kind of the bleakness and emptiness of the majority of the environment, and then just the spire of light. Right. So when I'm looking at this, I'm just looking for things that capture an emotion. And then... I saw this one, and this is by Kai Sin, and this one, it's obviously some kind of ancient spaceship that's been there so long, mountains have grown over it, Yeah. and this new culture has emerged and is building a temple there, and that um, this may be too sci-fi, or right. maybe not, we don't know. But, but the idea of the nature having grown around the what was there before yes. could play into the ancient yes. ancient city thing. And the, hmm. Exactly. And uh, so, and what's crucial about this part is you want to stay completely out of the box. Blue sky. Everything is on the table. Got a couple of paragraphs of direction and then from there we go. So right now there's there's no wrong image, wrong art as long as we stay within what we know so far. Right. Okay, so I am going to bring over, hopefully this will work. So I found this on Geek Tyrant a couple weeks back. And turn off the sound. But this is a video, um, Color Psychology, and this woman has gone through and just taken scenes from different films and talked or just called out the color and why they work. So we've gone from innocence pink to more femininity pink to, yeah, it's still feminine. It's kind of old and creepy, but feminine. <laughs> It's amazing how many scenes I recognize, and I'm like, wow, that really was very pink. Yeah. And, like, when you break it out individually like this, it becomes, it's very noticeable. Yes. There's an artist I used to work with, uh, Rob Rubel. He's the art director at Naughty Dog on the Uncharted series. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had done a study of a particular film from the 50s or 60s, and how the director had used color to draw your eye through a scene so like people dressed in red and everyone was usually dressed in black and white 
but he positioned them so that visually in the scene, your eye could follow where he wanted you to go. Hmm. It was awesome. Next time I'll have Rob's site and we can take a look. Actually, yeah. maybe next time we'll take a look at some sites that are good for inspiration. So we have orange here for community. I love that. Hmm. Warm, and we're going to get a little further along. Innocence is orange. Come on, catch up with me. Did I break it? It's probably loading. It is. There okay, we go. there we go. So, this pale yellow, and you wouldn't think it, but insecurity. insecurity. Yeah. Huh. So, I thought that was pretty interesting. Nature. Well, yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> kind of get that. It's very desaturated. What I thought was interesting is immaturity tends to be very desaturated. Like the colors aren't fully realized yet. Mm -hmm. So this is where we want to pay attention. And uh, this is destruction. Uh, yeah. And it's a lot of these cool blue greens, very desaturated. Yes. And there is more to that video. So I recommend uh, you check it out on Geek Tyrant. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> okay. Need three monitors. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the inspiration here. And so I have spent uh, a few hours this afternoon getting started and um, thinking about those high-level ideas I've just put together roughs well actually let me show you the first thing I did is I grabbed a couple of screenshots from that video right and that way I could this just sample yeah those blues and the yeah, shadow the, colors and the kind and of teal. green blue right exactly and so from that, I uh, started creating a rough. And when I think about the rough, I'm thinking, I want to spend 15, no more than 30 minutes on it. Okay. It needs to be quick. As long as I'm thinking about um, bleak, oppressive, desaturated, and um, not much light in the world, in one spot that's a beacon of hope. That's what's going through my mind. So started doing this the idea is that uh, we have the hill where the the last city stands we should call it the last city hmm can we don't know gotta write that one down it'll yeah, go in a pot of ideas yes so we have this last city that we know of right now uh, it's built on the hill and at the top of the hill there's something special that is generating light energy and it's the only spot of brightness in this world so it's like okay okay leak spot of light quick 15 minute 20 minute sketch and uh then wow. i take that same piece of art and i just copy it and then i do a different variation and with this one, I started to get more, like, the beam of light is much thinner, much more prominent. More of a beam, too. Yes. Uh, the shape of the hills tend to be um, more fantastical. Mm -hmm. As you get out into the desolate lands, they're broken. Yeah, jagged edges. Yes. Not a happy spot. Right. And then from that... Whoa. I just did the color a bit. I got a little more green in there. Mm -hmm. And then I did something with the clouds so that they uh, feel like hands. Yeah. Coming it has in that towards the light. Oppressive I, feeling. Where are we? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you can't figure out where your hands are supposed to go. <laughs> yes. Um, 
to get more of that and the light and then I kept more of a natural hill and I started to indicate hey there's buildings or something on this hill mm -hmm. and it's still green and then as you come out the land is bleak and barren and broken and sharp and dangerous and again it's 15 20 minute rough um, don't think too much about it just focus on those ideas so with this one I actually opened it up um, in my discussions with James I asked him well what's behind the mountain with the light on it right and he was like I don't know make it cool <laughs> so I'm like okay it could be an ocean it could be a massive wall it could be a mountain range not sure so this one I actually pushed back a bit gave it some more light opened it up and made it almost like islands and oceans yeah it's almost isolated this time yeah and then the the jaggedness of the rocks convey a sense of danger and bleakness and then with this one took the same kind of thing and then I started doing these huge foreground elements these monolithic things and they are the ancient architecture shrouded in mystery <laughs> and what's funny is like when I first started drawing them I was just thinking buildings post-apocalyptic landscape right maybe that's the way to go but I um, in asking James those questions it's like it's not quite post-apocalyptic but that architecture isn't from the, the humans that are living there now or is it right. them? The, so that it's would like, be the shrouded in mystery element Kind yes. Of like what happened? What what yeah. are they? Exactly. Right. So right now they're kind of broken up, twisted rectangle things. Mm. And and I actually did those pieces on a separate layer, just because someone might say, "Oh, I love that," but can you flip it? And then you can easily. Flip right. <laughs> I do like that. It makes me think of when I first saw it. It made me think of cutscene because I've been playing The Witcher. Mm -hmm. I'm always like a year behind every game that comes out. I. <laughs> And I'm playing it, and I'm loving it, and that's what it makes me think of their cut. They're like, every time you load the game, it recaps you on the story that's mm. been going on, and that's what that makes me think. Awesome. <laughs> Witcher is on my to playlist. I started playing Dark Souls 3. Oh, man. Yes. How's that going? I got my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've uh, been watching Let's Plays of Dark Souls 3 and watching people get their butt kicked. Yes. I mean, it's cool. I like the combat. Um, I spent about an hour making my character, and then I got in the game, and I'm like, uh, I chose a herald. Use as a spear. I'm okay. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> so, you made another one? Well, not yet, but next time I play, I'm just going to go with the knight, and I'm not going to make him cool yet. I'll play a little bit, and it feels good. Then I'll go back and make my guy. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a smart move, because I waste a lot of time. Well, I don't call it wasting. Right. But I spend a lot of time on character creation. Yes. I, I spent an hour and I'm like, I, the amount of like stuff they have, yeah. it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, next rough I did here, I took those same kinds of shape, but I made them more organic and always keeping the focal point. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I started to get, oh, you know, maybe we do something a little more Mesa-like. And that's where the art part of the show is going. So what I've done so far is create some mesas. And the first one I did, I actually use this as reference image. It's like I really like this shape. I like that sense of the broken tree stump because it alludes to that this has been here for a really long time. Right. So, created one of these, and I'm actually going to have to slide into position now. Oh, yes. I've got to get that art arm going. Right. <laughs> if I'm here... There you go. It's easier for me to move than you, I think. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, that's... Oh, no. There you go. How's that? Here, yeah? Gonna, okay. You oh. got this? Hey, you're the wolf. The wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, I've created this image. And um, just like, okay, 
like the Mesa, and I want to do something where the world is a lot of broken mesas, that sort of thing, as right. uh, one of the options. So I went ahead and I just roughed in. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Oh, all that extra. Oh, okay. It's because I did some painting on the other ones and I was on the wrong layer. I'm like, oops. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make one more mesa and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with all this. So. And by make one more, you mean draw one more right now or yes. copy? Okay. Yep, draw one more right now. Um, so and I'm using this chalk brush. Mm -hmm. uh, if... You've watched shows in the pa past. I like a very rough edge, painterly type brush. So okay. chalk, brushes, that sort of thing. Um, when I first started painting, I was very illustrative, very realistic, very detailed. Okay. And as the years have progressed, I've changed my style. My ch style has evolved. I think I'm better. I hope I'm better. <laughs> Um, but it has become more, yeah, just more art. Okay. Where I'm focused Not on. in the lines or too clean lines or what? Yeah, just more compositional, more um, showing the, the strokes of the painting that makes the image. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, always the erasing. Yes. I remember the first, the first time I watched you do art, I was like, he's erasing. That's uh, one of the secrets I learned from uh, the uh, owner of the Gemini School of Art, Roger Barcelona. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so he's like, Stephen, the secret to drawing in Photoshop is not drawing, it's erasing. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you that know Roger, Roger is uh, he's an iconic artist. He... Um, he would tell me stories. Actually, I think he just celebrated his 85th birthday. Wow. He was four years old, living with his family in Cairo, when the British pulled out and the Nazis moved in. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he remembers when acrylic came on the scene and he started a painting with acrylic. Wow. It's probably about 60 years ago. He loves painting in acrylic. He probably at that point never would have thought you could be painting in Photoshop on a tablet screen. Actually, yeah, I don't think the Wackhams or the Cintiqs existed at that point, but it was certainly <laughs> the Wackham tablet. Oh, and he loved it. Whatever the new tool was, he was, yes. He was like, let me try it. Yes. That is a love of art. Yes, he is amazing. There is a uh, book that he's in. It's the Italian Bible of Artists. And hmm. he's Spanish, lived in Cairo, lived in Barcelona a lot, um, lived in Norway, had an art school in England, London for like 15 years, came to the States, got into the game industry in 2000. Wow. <laughs> and that's where I met him. And then I think in 2001, 2002, started up the school. And so they have a school up in Cedar Park. And Here? The, yeah, here. Oh. Yeah, as a matter of fact, cool. um, like huge amount of talent coming out of that school. I went to an artist reception recently. Mm -hmm. And yes. And is it an art school for like any art or game art art school? Um, Digital art. I'm gonna is. say any kind of art. So mm -hmm. they have um, God, I can't remember Danny's last name, but one of the teachers is a fine artist who paints in oil, oh. and uh, another teacher is a he was the art director at Certain Affinity, does his own thing now, and he. Um, he worked on Epic Mickey and did movie stuff. Uh, one of the other teachers, she owns Game World's Game Camp for wow. kids. And wow. Still in that. Yeah. So it's it's a great place. That's very cool. And you go there to learn how to make good art. 
<laughs> so, and they teach you digital modeling, that sort of thing. But if you want to focus on the traditional, you can too. That is very nice. I would say, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Their Ooh. recent grads, um, Powerhouse Animation has snapped them all up. <laughs> and I didn't find out until I went to um, the 15 year anniversary celebration of Powerhouse Animation. But uh, two of the artists that I had met there and I had actually taught a couple of classes were the artists that did some of our opening cinematics. Wow, very cool, small world. Yeah, so I thought that was neat. Amber Rain actually shared one of her favorite Stephen Dinelli pieces. Uh oh. Yeah, let's take a look. Ooh. <laughs> Back in the day. Ah, oh, Amber. <laughs> all right, we're going to address this right now. Why is it a favorite? Right I want to know why. So let's talk about this. Wait, take this one out and move it here. Then we can see if she chats back. Okay. We'll just go back and forth. Okay. I'll be quick. So cool. this is Tellurian Academy. And okay. back in the late 90s when I started freelancing, I did some magic cards. Um, Matt Wilson, I believe he owns Privateer Press, mm -hmm. his company. Um, he was the art director at that time. And I did, I don't know, 20, 30 cards. Okay. And it turns out two of the cards that I did, and they were pickups because other artists were supposed to do them, but they were slow or whatever. Okay. Um, so you just, you just like happened to have Right. I had them. to do this like he needed it in 48 hours. And that was back in the day when you FedExed it. So I had about 36 hours to like draw it. Draw, fax draw? Fax it, yeah. And then paint okay. it in oil and then get it to him. So it turns out Tellurian Academy is a uh, can be a game breaker, and it's one of the most powerful cards in the game. <laughs> so even Very. after 15, 16 years, people still reach out asking for the original art and for me to sign cards. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> All right. So a couple <laughs> years ago, um, a fellow reached out. Um, Antonio from Sicily, who was like, would you like to be guest of honor at a comic convention in Catania, Sicily? <laughs> and my first reaction was like, he couldn't be for real. Like, this has to be a scam. Right. Well, their comic convention, EtnaCon, or whatever, Etna Comics Con, 55,000 people from Europe. <laughs> so, for him, I drew... A new Tellurian Academy because I was so tired <laughs> of seeing the of same seeing one. That. So if you go to my website, which is in the process of being updated, and you click on Tellurian Academy 2. Look at this tree. A new Tellurian Academy, huh? Yes. Does the world know the new Tellurian Academy exists? Ah, that didn't work. It is right. Where Not is there. it? Uh oh. That's not good. There it is. Okay. So, this is Tellurian Academy 2. Wow. I actually included Mount Etna in the back there erupting. <laughs> what do you them. think? So, I he loved it. It's actually a play mat. So, I've got a couple of cool play mats in Italian with my art on it. Very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I can so see why that'd be a favorite. 15 years ago... Now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is too good. It is absolutely gorgeous, Amber Rain, you're right. Uh, Thank you. If only I wasn't just slightly too young for the Magic the Gathering era. I would have been all over that. <laughs> I would have had all the cards. Just know it. When I was at Lightbox, uh, Bill and a few of the guys there used to play. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Like, Bill, you want me to sign your cards? Man, I missed out on the greatest nerd era of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the one I'm envious of are the kids that got to grow up reading Harry Potter. Right. My daughter, Teresa, 27, as she was reading the Harry Potter books, her age. Was the same? Matched the same. Dang. 
She's got a Order of the Phoenix tattoo on her neck. Man. Um, she would tell me about how she would play, like, Quidditch in the garage yes. with her friends and stuff. Now that's real. People play Quidditch in leagues. Yeah, I know. I'm going to wait till they get it playing it with hoverboards. Right. And then we'll see yes. what happens. That'll be there. But to, and I've read those books. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. They're phenomenal. It was amazing. I, but it, I wasn't the same age as, you right. know, I didn't. I, a renaissance in literature was, like that yeah, to have such glorious. an impact on oh, society. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, that was amazing. So, <laughs> yes. And now I guess you could say Game of Thrones, but it's all it's all HBO. Yeah, <laughs> so it's hard to. It's not, I haven't even anymore. seen it yet. <laughs> we just watch books. I have four of every one of Stephen's cards in the Telerian Academy blown up to poster size. Now I want that one. All right. <laughs> To learn Academy too. Amber, I will, um, yeah, I've got a real high res one of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have your email, so I will email you a super high res of Tellurian Academy 2, and you can get that printed up. What a great day. Yes. Tellurian Academy! Magic. It's gorgeous. Oh, the old one just kills me. <laughs> And the message is, You're I'm a big fair. fan of your art, and my favorite piece is Tellurian Academy. I'm like, one, you don't know art. Two, you don't know art. I think you're being hard on yourself. It was clearly a winner. Oh. Okay, so what am I doing here? Uh, so I'm going to take, uh, take our main mountain here and uh, just kind of position on one-third, two-third. I'm going to take this guy, position him in the foreground. Let's get this guy, pull him over here. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of scale him up. Take this guy here. And do Actually, we'll put him behind. And uh, we'll stretch him out a bit. Do like this kind of thing. Bring this guy down a bit. Um, this guy here, I'm going to use my dodge tool. I have to set it to shadows. Oh, 13. Let's crank that up. Okay, really? What's going on here? Why is this not working? Hmm. Okay, so for some... It is. Dodging. It, it is, but it should just be dodging the shadow. Oh, okay. But it's actually dodging... The whole thing? Yeah. So, uh, I've got protect tones checked. Maybe that's it. Ah, that is it. Okay. Ah, Photoshop. Adobe. <laughs> I know very little about Photoshop. Yeah, and well, so. so I was really excited. Um, if you want to get into Photoshop, uh, Adobe allows you, uh, you get a subscription now. So it's about $20 a month. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they update about once a year. So Photoshop, it's like, okay, it's about $250 a year. Mm -hmm. I use it every day. I love painting it. It's my painting program of mm -hmm. choice. And, and I do that because I also make materials and textures. Okay, and like your own brushes kinds of things? Right, but uh, there are painting programs like ArtRage and especially Corel Painter, mm -hmm. which are paint studio and software. Okay. And I had Corel 11 and I was working with it a little bit. And if you just paint it, it's better. Okay. But for me as a developer, I'm painting, I'm You're making editing. materials, I'm right. editing, I'm doing things, and I, I just feel more comfortable working in one program. Okay. So. Makes sense. Okay, so I've got that. Yeah, my, ex my extent of Photoshop knowledge is there was a period of time, I'm, I'm a very big fan of manga. My knowledge of manga is not very great, but I'm a fan of it. Okay. There was a period of time when I would take blank black and white scans and color them in oh. Photoshop. And that is how I, that is what I learned in Photoshop. Nice. <laughs> it actually did, I learned a little bit about multiply layers and, you know, dodge and things like that, but still very new. 
is a wonderful tool. So something I'm doing here with these pieces is I'm making sure that I'm overlapping the focal point. So that helps create depth. And then I'm also going to just start to lighten things up a bit. And then that way, I'm going to pull this guy to the foreground. Hello, Dame Lori. She says, hi, everyone. Hi, Stephen. Hey, Dame Lori. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Stephen is doing art for us. Yes. That's what we're all here for, right? Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to try it there. I think maybe the center one I want. Big in the middle. I'm going to right click on it and do. I guess I'll start with perspective and just see where we can go. So, what's the difference between perspective and distort? And I think there's also warp. So perspective will allow you to just give you a like a um, sorry the name has fallen out of my head a uh, parallel not parallel but a symmetrical manipulation of it okay um, distort just let okay. you kind of move one of the points around wherever you want. And it affects the perspective based on that point? Yes, and okay. if you hold down control, you can also okay. do distort. Huh. And then the big money one has always been warp. I went to a uh, program put on by artists from Future Poly and Arena Net mm -hmm. in Seattle, the guys that do uh, Guild Wars 2, okay. Daniel Doce and uh, Cake Eye, Jason Jones, uh, Jamie Jones. Um, Horia Doce. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, it was amazing, but it was actually pretty funny because uh, Cake Eye uses warp all the time yeah but the majority of people in the audience were not familiar with warp and i wasn't either so he's like really you guys don't use warp <laughs> <laughs> so we showed everyone how to use warp and so it's like okay now we all know how to use warp <laughs> yay that is funny that is funny lighten that guy up all right I'll take this big guy in the foreground and um, and what I want to do is kind of make a s-curve type shape as it moves through the image okay I think I saw a couple of other images that had a similar shape. yes okay yes. am I feeling I don't know I kind of like that gap okay, so maybe we do something like that and then we take this guy this thing because what I'm going to do here is actually make this the top of one of these mesas. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. Yeah. Ooh. I'm thinking everything on the right here to slide over, okay, it needs to go up top, slide over a bit there, yeah, and then I'm going to take this stuff here, move that a bit to the left, actually, I'll just bring these guys over too, yeah, I think we can get something interesting, okay. I'm liking what that looks so far. Thank you. So at this point, commit. <laughs> <laughs> Commit. Right. Remember that we are we wanting to spend 15 minutes on this. That this is a tone and mood concept. It's okay. focused on just like palette color and shape and to capture a vibe. Right. We're not trying to illustrate what it is. Now something might come out of it. 
hey, I really like mesas, or uh, I really like those things that look like but buildings. But it's just supposed to feel like something currently. Exactly. Okay. So it can be gotcha. pretty abstract. So what I'm going to do is take that, all these guys, and just merge layers. And now I'm completely committed. Yes. And this is usually at the point where I'm like, ah! Okay, so when you said commit, it's like you, you set yourself a time limit, you've hit that point, you did all the kind of brainstorming, wiggling of things around, and you're like, all right, this is what I got. Yes. Finish the concept. Yep. Right. Just go with it. Okay. If you stop and start thinking about it. Yeah, it can kind of, I imagine it can get. Right. And there will be a time when we stop and we think about it. Right. And uh, we design. Re yes, and we do like the same brush stroke over and over and over again to get it <laughs> perfect. Um, I owe you for that one, Mark Sealander. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Rubel, too. There are some artists that will literally plan it out, back up, plan, stroke, assess, commit, and then go and do it again. Mm. And they are some of the finest artists I've ever seen you in my life. You get stuff done that way, kind of. Oh, and yeah. you don't keep now, going back. And then you look at the paintings or the drawings, and they're just beautiful. And a uh, guy used to work with Mark Sealander, amazing artist. He would be sitting there, and he kept trying to do it over and over and over again. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to get this stroke right. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched him. He must have gone like 20 times. <laughs> But he was right. I was like, you know, that actually does look really good. Okay. Maybe I'll give that some thought. Yep. Yeah. I was, at that point, though, I was like, I was running the show, and I'm all like, the clock, man. Time. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <sighs> so after you decided... Okay, I've committed to this. Mm -hmm. How do you know what you're doing next? Because you seem to have an idea of what to do next. Um, so uh, one of the things that I've done with this direction is that I want a sense of these mesas and they're all these like islands and there's space between them that you got to move through. Okay. So now that I've gotten this nice silhouette, I've got my primary focus here and... Uh, now it's a matter of creating shapes that will help lead your eye. To that. To that, yes. Okay. Exactly. I can see kind of how you get there already. There's like a path on the... It just almost looks like a path up here. Yes. And it's... Um, actually, here, yeah, can you go up? So what I'm seeing mm -hmm. in the abstract is that ultimately... That's my primary focal point. Mm -hmm. This is my secondary focal point. Mm -hmm. And then I want your eye to kind of wander right. through okay. here, or maybe that way. Yeah, but wander to yes. it. Yes, so I'm gonna make this ridge stronger. These are gonna be supporting. Probably gonna have to do something about this in the middle. But in my head, that's what I'm doing. All right. And is this point of view, if I was walking through this, mm -hmm. would I be up here walking or would I be down there standing next to these tall um, and weird seeing the top? I'm thinking a combination of both, that you would be up here mm -hmm. and maybe, oh, and actually that's a really good point. Okay, good question. <laughs> Thank you, Chesley. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is actually put some kind of ledge okay. from the lower side that you kind of walk up and then come over here and then maybe we'll do something where there's okay. a land bridge. Questions? Not yet. So we're getting near the end. Do we want to recap what we would yes. Uh, like? Yes, let's do that. So 
I am Chelsea, your host for this show, and I am with Stephen Denali, the art director of Kingdom Games. This show will be weekly. We do not currently have a name. We could definitely use your help with that. Um, but it will be myself and Stephen every week doing concept art for a new project for Kingdom Games. That is still in what stage? How? What would you call it? Um. Yes. Pre-production, I yeah. guess, is a technical term. Yes, we are currently working on concept art. What do we know? What do we know so far that we're looking for? Um, well, uh, along with needing a name, we need a day and time. Yes, for the show. <laughs> a day and time. Yes. When do you want to watch us? What day is best? When are you bored and you're like, what's going on on Twitch? Yeah. And you find nothing? Put us in that spot. Tired of watching people die playing <laughs> Dark Souls? <laughs> <laughs> it's just been a while since I've watched people die playing Dark Souls. <laughs> but yes, help us figure out a time and a day that works best. We will see what ends up working best in our schedule. Thursdays at 4.30 will be the usual Kingdom Games stream. So we will not want to take this spot every week. But the game, what do we know? We know... Um we're making a medieval fantasy game. Mm -hmm. The themes are mature and sinister. The world is bleak and oppressive. It's very desaturated visually mm -hmm. with points of light and color to guide you. Right. Um, there is a, excuse me, ancient architecture shrouded in mystery. And it yes. really is. Shrouded, shrouded in, in mystery. mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery to us, too. Yes. Um, let's see. Character creation. So you'll be able to make yes. your own character. And you are special. You have been summoned to this world to yes. defend the last city. Uh, the only beacon of hope. Yes. Yes. In this mature and sinister, bleak and oppressive world. Yes. Right. Excuse me. There's an elevator pitch in there somewhere. Ele what's an elevator pitch? A one sentence to describe it. Yeah, there is. We'll yeah. find. We, we got to figure out what that is. <laughs> um, and uh, this world has been overrun by demons. Yes, your enemy. The, they are not monsters. They are demons. Demons. Yes. They are demons. They are demons. And we don't know what you are yet. Do we know what you are? Uh, we know that you're summoned. You're special. You are whatever you want to be, and you do not come from this world. Yes. Okay. I'm excited. Ooh. Uh, Amber Rain is a game aimed at solo or multiplayer. That known yet? Okay, well, it's definitely going to be solo. So. <laughs> at, at the least. <laughs> right. Um, I Honestly, it's completely unknown about multiplayer. I do know that we'd love to do it. Yeah, I know yeah. it's been an interest. I know yeah. it's been something we've been wanting to do. Yes, and I, for me, I'm a co-op gamer. So, okay. Yeah. Right now, playing The Division. Oh, yeah? How do you like The Division? Oh, I love it. Yes. I love it. All the, like, media the hype against it, completely I, undeserved. I, I am a big video game. Most of my video game knowledge comes from watching. Very few um, of the games have actually played myself, which I don't know if that doesn't make me a real gamer. I think it does. I appreciate <laughs> them all the same. I get two to four hours <laughs> in a week. Okay. At See, I get best. more than you, and I just watch. <laughs> Yeah. But I loved the vision too. What I saw of it. I loved it too. Yeah, it's really, really good. And it, it has become apparent to me. I've just hit level twenty eight, so mm -hmm. I've still got a couple more levels. Oh yeah, you're not even at thirty yet. No. And uh and actually when we started playing again this weekend, it had probably been about a month since Dwight and I had played. <laughs> He's been playing Dark Souls <laughs> and I've been playing uh Doom. And <laughs> Uh, we had to take a while to like remember what to do. Yeah, how do you yeah, remember it's like, this? Okay, but wait, people are shooting at me. <laughs> but it, I would say it is a good co-op multiplayer. Oh, it's uh, incredible! I loved the way they did the map. You yes. walk into this room and it's multiplayer. You walk out of it and it's yes. Oh, it was so impressive. Yes, it uh, and it's completely streamed. You mm -hmm. just walk from yeah, one you end just of go the city in there. to the other. Yep, it's incredible. And the, I, essentially you're 
you're a special operative for a secret government organization that reports to the president, mm -hmm. and you are called in because a plague has wiped out the majority of New York City and mm -hmm. chaos reigns, and you mm -hmm. are there to restore order. Mm -hmm. Some of the coolest moments are they have dogs running around, they'll bark at you. Mm -hmm. um, with one of the updates, the dogs now pee and poop. No way. And nuzzle each other. So you'll see a dog peeing <laughs> on like a fire hydrant. <laughs> And they'll be nuzzling each other, and then they'll turn and bark at I'm you. I'm a huge fan of that. I love NPC background. Oh. I played Assassin's Creed. I, I love Assassin's Creed. Syndicate was my first full, I did this all myself, Assassin's Creed game. And I awesome. used to love stop, just stopping yeah. in the city and hearing conversations and watching yes. them. And, ah, coolest. That's awesome. I've seen a crow take out a rat twice now, because you got rats running right. everywhere. And I was like <laughs> shooting rats just for target practice. And the crow swoops in and takes the rat. I'm just like, whoa. What? And then my favorite thing is there are civilians that ask you for help. Yes, and you can give them things. Yes, you can give them metapacks, you give them food and water, and most of the time they give you something in return. Right. They've given me so much stuff now, I'm like, please, no. Just I, take the water. I just just go. <laughs> so, I... I love it. And what I would love to see next is that, like, with all the clothes that I've been given, I want to be able to give them to people. Hey, oh, do you have a jacket? Good. Yes, I do. That's a smart thought. And I, like that. I want to be able to give food to dogs. Oh, If the dog barks yeah. at you and it's like, feed I'd dog. I'd lose all my food to the dogs. Be like, here I you go. I'd definitely lose all my food to the dogs. That would be awesome. <laughs> Amber Rain says, chaos, rains, magic words, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Amber Rain. Amber, when you did say rain earlier, I thought yes. about that. I thought about Amber Rain. <laughs> yes, um, Amber Rain is the high pri priestess of the Temple of the Dark Star in Shroud of the Avatar. Mm -hmm. So um, in Shroud of the Avatar, there is, it's kind of broken out between law and chaos. So Richard Garriott, AKA Lord British, is law and then okay. Star Long, aka Dark Star. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Which actually, um, Dark Star is one of my favorite character concepts. If you have any questions while Steven's looking for this, put them in the chat for us, for Kingdom Games, for Steven about there the is. new project. Any ideas or thoughts about our medieval fantasy RPG? Put them in the chat. Let us know what's up. So, Tell us about this. That's Dark Star. Okay. Yeah, I actually shot a photo of Star and Richard when I did their <laughs> concept. I actually, I like Star's better because he's just got that snarl on his face and I was able to pull off the light and the shadow on the painting and everything. <laughs> so cool. And to know him, that he's kind of like this laid-back, non-confrontational, hippie, chillin'. goofball, chill. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> chillin'. Like, My and online yes. persona, I am the <laughs> ah, lord of chaos. Ah. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Star is a wonderful man. <sighs> All right. But um, yes. Okay, Anything so. Anything last you want to throw on the image before we... Head on out of here. Oh, don't press me for time. I'm sorry. Okay. So, let me, uh, so I've got like a color overlay. And I'm just going to turn that to overlay. Ooh, look, instant art. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm come down to my image and I'm going to do a control L to adjust the levels. And what I need to do is pull out some of the dark so we can see all the shades in there. Okay. Does it go this way? I gotta do that, but then I need to pull out the light. Okay, somewhere in there. Um, can I have five minutes? <laughs> Just five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, where's the camera? Five minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the old one. I'm not looking at Yeah, you got <laughs> Technical difficulty. Five minutes. <laughs> Maybe Chris can teach us a few things about how to use yeah, this. Yeah, oh my gosh. When the cat's away, the mice will play. I know. Thank you for filling in. I oh, really appreciate please. it. I'll be here every week for you. For this okay. show. So I'm going to take this color, 
Uh, I'm just going to lighten it a bit, and I'm going to go a spidge more green. Yes, because destruction. Right. Bluish green color thing. And I'm probably getting carried away. Oh, you totally stressed me out with, like, the time. Okay, take a deep breath. You thought I mentioned time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath, Steven. I'm panicking. You've got this. I'm panicking. The <laughs> Wives <laughs> hang in the balance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so if you're an aspiring artist and yes. uh, you're working, something to keep in mind is that uh, you hit the zone, and, man, you get out of the zone. <laughs> so um, something I learned back in the day when I was freelancing is when you're not feeling it, don't force it. Don't try to when do it. When you're not feeling it, don't force it. Now, mind you, if you're being paid money and you're on a deadline, then, your job yeah. is to learn how <laughs> to, to force it, it and still make it look like it you done. didn't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, still make it look like you didn't. Yeah. Or manage your time efficiently. Yeah, but th that's like that? a thousand, thousand days kind of thing. Mm. Takes some time. Um, yeah, if you're just... Creating freely. Yeah. Take some time. It does. I uh, write for fun on the side. Oh, do you? What do yes. you write? Um, I don't know. It kind of just depends on what I'm feeling. Okay. But Or what's going on in my life. But um, I had to learn that too. I would have to stop and just step away or take a deep breath or not rush myself. That's awesome. Now I am curious. <laughs> I'm going to read some of your writing. <laughs> oh, speaking of writing, Amber speaking Rain? Of writing. Yes. Amber Rain, where is your novel? She is an amazing writer. I think you've told me about this. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that like... That's how we met. Yeah. So uh, we had a contest, a Valentine's Day contest, mm -hmm. and you write a, a love poem mm -hmm. to... Uh, someone at uh, Portalarium working on Shroud. Okay. And uh, so we got all these poems. I think we got like 60 or 70. Read through them all. Came down to two for me. One was really simple. One was more, it was deeper. Lots of levels kind of. Yes. You had to read it a couple times. Yeah, I did. So I read that one, and then Star read his, and sure enough, Amber Rain had written both of them. <laughs> And then she shared some <laughs> of her writing with me, and I'm like, man, you, <laughs> you need a book. That is winning. She said, it yes. is coming. It Good. had a few bumps, Good. but I'm getting back into the feel of it. All right. Lost when are we going to talk? You lost your inspiration. When, when are we going to talk book cover? Stephen Donnelly is down to do book cover. That's right. Book cover publishers don't like me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Of a rubble. Okay. I am loving this blue. I like the teal. It's like it is green, but it is blue. Yeah. I like. I like it. And it's destruction. Yes. Yeah, kind of sad. No, we need some destruction. But music. also kind of hopeful. Like the blue is like a brighter. Yes, and I'm keeping it focused. Um, the strongest light is where the focus is at. Gabriel Knight Shadow says, yes, looking forward to your cover for that, Stephen, when it's done. Thank you, sir. Me too. So you got to finish it, Amber Rain. Yes. But no rushing, of course. <laughs> no rushing the artists. Make it good. <laughs> I'm betting it's going to be the next Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's no joke. You really are a good writer, Amber Rain. Some powerful stuff. This looks great. Okay, so. Uh, feeling I good. I see this ledge. I see the trail. Yeah. Now I need some uh, green. I have to make it look relatively like. Oh, hey, there's some nice spots here. <laughs> this city is pretty. Yes. There's <coughs> some green on the rocks. While we're waiting for Steven to wrap up, I do have some other things that you could, that we would need to think about. Yes. Character creation, my favorite. Yes. Is there any idea in terms of 
race or, um, you know, creature or uh, species, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Some games call it species. Some games oh. call it race. We're human. All human. All Character human. Okay. Yes. So you and it will be just one type of creature, and you get to choose what you look like. So one human, yes. just human. Yes, one human. Cool. And you'll be able to pick your gender, mm -hmm. uh, your ethnicity. Um, okay. Hopefully we will have a level of, well, at least I want to have a level of fidelity that you can, you know, do I want to be thin? Do I want to be heavy? Do I right, want to be masculine? yeah, representation. Yeah. I get yeah. you. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely very important, especially for character creation. Yes. Amber Rain says, thank you, sir. From you, that means a whole lot more than many might assume. The story does have a wolf, inspired by Steven <laughs> himself. <laughs> Winky face. Can't forget to talk about the emoticon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amber Rain. <laughs> I don't get enough winky faces. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put some green in there. We're probably long past my five minutes that I said. Yes. I lied. I know. Guys lied. Good thing you set the time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so this green, yes. is it just the color green, or is it meant to represent nature? Ah, uh, nature. Okay, it's so it is a lush city. Yes. And everything else seems to not have any vegetation whatsoever. Yes. Gotcha. So now I'm gonna. I actually want to do kind of a peachy color. Now we got to warm up what's happening around this guy. Important. Yes. I and think one then, of your other uh, sketches of this had it for red. I'm going to do the uh, turn my brush to color dodge, grab a rich, saturated golden color. Boom! Boom! <laughs> you could just hear the noise when you did that stroke. <gasps> I have my dorky moment. <laughs> okay. going to hit that. And Beautiful. we're going to call it good. Going to call it good, he yes. says. Yes. Uh, now let me recap all the art. Yes. <laughs> okay. You ready? You ready for your last five minutes this time? Yeah. Where are we at? <laughs> I'll do it in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> cool montage um, that I found on... Geek Tyrant, I just posted it to chat so everyone can check it out. Colors and feelings and the way colors express things. Yes. And from that video, I grabbed two screenshots that focused on the destruction. Very monochromatic, very kind of the blue teal, very dark. And wherever there is light, it's minimal and it's Cold. I feel like text should flash across the screen. It's like, name those movies. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't recognize Jennifer's this. Body. I love no Megan Fox. Way. Jennifer's Body. I people hated that. it when it came out, but I was like, no, you don't I get it. it. It's a comedy. It's like funny and scary, but people right. didn't get that. No, I thought it was really funny. I thought it was great. Yeah. And then the other one, of course, is uh, Fight, Fight Club. Club right? Yes. Yep. And uh, so, with the knowledge we have, it's a mature and sinister, bleak and oppressive. Desaturated. Ancient architecture shrouded in mystery. Medieval fantasy RPG. Yes. And you are not from this world, and your enemies are demons. Right. So, uh, there's our first rough. Here's our second rough. Here's our third rough. Oh, the hands. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure how we can pull that off, but that could be really cool. Yeah. It's cool as Lisa's an art piece. And we have our fourth rough. Opens it up. More of an ocean. The what was fallen buildings, <laughs> but not uh, more natural, just strange, crazy rocks. And then finally, the one we worked on today with uh, the mesas and stuff. I like it. That's it. 
What a great show. Thank you for joining us. I am Chelsea, and this is Kingdom Games art director Stephen Donnelly. We will be here every week. We don't know what day or time yet. Help us figure that out. Please. Yes, and welcome to the New Kingdom. Yes, and we'll see you the first week of August. Yes. I have to put these back on to see the stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's bad.